We make our decisions about money from a place of emotion first, and then we justify it with logic. Facts. You know how selfish it is as, as us, as human beings, for just want to have enough money to last this month. That's the most selfish thing we, we could ever do, and you're probably thinking, why is that? Purpose in life, it does make, whatever that purpose is, mm -hmm. it, you have a lack of motivation, a yeah. lack of zest for life. Some people will let the breakdown break them down, and they will never get to the breakthrough. And they'll say, and they'll stay in that place and they'll be broken down. You could still be in Hertfordshire. Like it literally came from quarter life crisis into going, I need to do something about this. I need to do things that bring me joy. Whether it turns into a career or not, I just need to figure out what, what's going to make me happy right now. Talking, writing, that kind of stuff. Just found myself talking about money and here we are. What was your mindset then to, to now? Like how, how has that changed? <laughs> Guys, <laughs> it's that time of the week. <laughs> It's that time of the day. Wow. It's purpose-led time. So you know that we're here to play. I didn't know if you are going to say stay or play. That's good. I like, I like, I like, I like, I like you, to play around you with do it. Play, you I, do play around it a little yes, bit. Continue, we'll continue, man. But it's that time of the week, as I said. And mm -hmm. today, we are back in the new studio once again mm. with an amazing, amazing guest. As we like to do, we like to introduce properly. Why? Because they deserve the respect that is necessary. So let me introduce the person. So today, we have Laura. And more, I had to say a whole full government name because it's that real. She's a money mindset expert. Wow, wow, She's a financial well-being speaker. She's a podcast host. And also, the last one she told me to say herself. It's not me who said this one here. But she said herself, she is a full time legend. Are you going to hold her up like that? <laughs> should have just said it. I agree, by the way. We agree, we agree. I agree too. We agree. I agree too. But guys, this woman here, she's really killing it. She was number two in the educational charts on Clap the for podcast. Her. Clap for her. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. And we're privileged, we're blessed for her to be here today. Mm -hmm. And today's going to be an absolutely amazing episode. If you guys are interested in improving your mindset when it comes to money, mm -hmm. your saving understanding, and mm -hmm. also just understanding the principles of how to save and also to create money, stay tuned to the end and I'm pretty sure every single person on this podcast have an old young black white young old can benefit from this so guys share with a friend right this second mm -hmm. if you want audio like it and give us five star reviews and before we go without further ado mm. let's get straight into the episode welcome welcome hi uh, beautiful introduction it was really good isn't it could cry actually Cried you want to? Yeah, I might. You're an actor, to be fair, <laughs> yeah. so I wouldn't believe you, to be fair. <laughs> that, was one, that was one thing that surprised me, that you said you went to drama school, right? Yeah. That really... Drama school. Matter of fact, it surprised me, but now it doesn't. Because yeah. <laughs> I've met me. Exactly, now I've met you, and then we spoke a little bit. <laughs> yeah. She's a lovely, lovely person, lovely. people. Like, real, realness, realness. It's not just the social media. Do you know what I'm saying? You know what's interesting? Uh. I don't know about you guys, yeah? When I, when I see actors... When you guys, like, showing emotion, I'm not even sure if I should even believe it. Mm. Because, like, are you guys acting, you being real? Is that yeah. the boy cry Wolf? Yeah, you've got, you've got to be careful. Yeah. Be very careful. I don't, I don't ever use it in that, that way. Do you know what I mean? It can be manipulative, isn't it? Yeah, it can be mm. very manipulative. Mm. I, t I can cry on cue. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, I could, but I'm not going to do it. Like, right, okay. you could cry. I could, I could. I mean, I'd need a minute. Yeah. yeah but I could do we, it. We'll give you a minute, but we won't. <laughs> <laughs> not right now, but we could give you a minute. That's if impressive, I'm doing though. a show, yeah. bring it out. That's Just very like impressive. That. Yeah. Has like, that you helped you? You have to, like, go to a dark place. Yeah. To, oh, sorry, I've got tips and tricks. <laughs> I was going to ask you, has that helped her in her journey? I said, you guys just go to a dark place. No, has that helped you in your journey in terms of like what you do right now? Has the acting helped you? Yeah, I was talking about the crying. I was like, oh, no, no, no. No, no the acting. <laughs> At the acting, 100%. I was oh. talking about this today with my friend. I was like, the, it was such a huge part of like my identity. Like, mm -hmm. I was going to be, I was so like, I'm going to be an actress. Like, I thought I was going to be Kate Winslet and Titanic 2. Wow. That was the plan. Titanic 2. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the so they all die. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll <be> <laughs> Oh, sorry, guys. Well, <laughs> up. My bad. So if they haven't seen that yet, bro, need to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> Tell it that came out a while ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but like, I use so much of my performing mm. in what I do. Mm -hmm. Like, I got straight into public speaking. I've come got on, podcast. Come on, like all the things, and it's helped. Like the 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 the, the acting and the drama element has had oh. such a big impact. So the foundation. Yeah, being able to talk in front of people. Yeah, being able to get. I remember the first time I did Instagram stories. Mm. And the first couple of times I did like, you know, second guessed it a little bit. Yeah. A couple of goes in, I literally was like, bring it on. I wow. don't care getting in front of camera. Like, because oh. when you were when you were at drama school, mm -hmm. oh, I did the weekend one. And you learn like how to you do like acting for TV. So there's like TV, there's like cameras in front of you, lights, mm -hmm. like, and you have to just get up and do it. And like mm -hmm. they'll pick you'll all be sat and they'll just pick you up and they'll be like, Laura, get up and sing your song. 
and you have to just get up and sing it in front of everyone. Like Good. you, you, you have to learn to like just be okay with that. Mm-hmm. What's so interesting about that? So sorry to cut you off here. You know what's interesting about that? We're speaking earlier on us three about foundations yeah. and how people what was literally see you blow up overnight or you be who you are now. Yeah, I feel it just came to you naturally. But you spent weekends, months. I'm assuming years going to acting school for you to be so confident in front of cameras now. So when you go on camera now or speak in front of camera, you're like, this is easy. But not knowing people, not actually, not people didn't actually know that the hours behind for you to get to that point. So I, I think started, it's super interesting. Yeah, I started doing it when I was like 12, wow. maybe. Wow, wow, wow. And I would like do it the weekends, do it in the evenings, like religiously. It was like wow. my absolute love. Wow. Well, t- well, tell us a little, okay, so that's when you were 12. But tell us a little bit about what you do now. Wait, before we even get to that, so, oh, wow. sorry. Talk to a question me. we'd like to ask our guests beforehand. Oh, yeah, you'd like to ask. Go, bro, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so the question we'd like to ask our, our guests before they before we start the podcast properly is this, right? If this part of your life was a chapter in your book, what would it be called and why? Oh, that is a really good question. Talk what, to us. What would it be called? Um, This would be called, I think, my... um. My spiritual hot girl era. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's that definitely one. a new chapter. Do you know what I mean? What a chapter. My spiritual hot girl era. Please break that down. So I think that I'm a very spiritual person anyway. Okay. And I'm all, like literally I started reading like self-help books when I was like 16. Like, okay. Really young, really yeah. got into it, always been interested. Mm. And it's really, like, you know, personal development is such a wide, mm-hmm. like, just, there's so much in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And I really, like, I find that when I'm really in touch with my spiritual practices, it makes such a big difference to the way I show up in my work, the way I show up in my relationships, the way I attract money. Mm. So I'm kind of really, like, leaning into that. And, you know, as a woman, having mm. to uphold to, like, society's beauty standards, mm. like, I have, I'm just owning more than ever, like, who I am and how I look. Mm. And I think, I don't know whether it's get, getting to near to 30, um, as you guys learned earlier. Um, <laughs> I can't believe that still. I still can't believe that ever. <laughs> yeah. It's, look, I've got a young face. Indeed. Um, and, a, and a young, like a young personality, like a young char- yeah. ca- character. Yeah. I feel yeah. like I'm young at heart. Oh, you are? To be um, fair, 29 is not even 20, old. Yeah, 29 yeah. is still young. Like the world likes to tell, like, the world tries to tell us 29 is old. Yeah. That is just the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I saw, yeah. I saw a quote, I think I showed John the other day, right? It's like, if our life truly begins at 18, yeah. Technically, say you're 31 years old, technically you're 13 years old. Yeah. Because from zero to 18, you're kind of in the system, you go to school, you do things the way you've been told to do it. From 18 onward, it's like you're born again. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? And then it's like, how many times have, like, if you've only just become an adult, that is your new life? Yeah. Technically, I'm only nine years old. Yeah. I mean, Spring chicken. Yeah. You're, you're so young. And the thing is, though, we're still going to make mistakes. That's just the encouragement to everyone right now. Like, you might be 29, 52. Your life started at 18 really and truly. Of course, yeah, life was there beforehand. I'm not trying to dispute that. But what I'm trying to say to you, don't be so hard on yourself because just like a child has to go through a time where they make mistakes, they fall on their, they fall on their, um, on their legs, they get up again. The same thing happens to you too. So don't be so hard on yourself. Give yourself grace, trust the process. And over time, you will, still, you will learn to be able to go through um, the, um, the chapters of life. Mm. Yeah. And I think like, my like spiritual journey like i think people roll their eyes not everyone but like a lot of people are oh she's spiritual she's woo woo but like i think it's such an important part of who i am Mm. and like you know i think it's the same as people being religious Mm -hmm. that's spirituality is like my religion Mm. like and i think that that is more right now really prevalent for me i hear it um so yeah that that would be my my chapter i like that i like that you have anything to say bro not off the back of that, I was gonna, I was gonna go to the next part. Please do, bro. I was just gonna talk about what you do right now. Like, what, what is it? What does life look like for you right now? What do you enjoy doing? All that kind of stuff. So right now, my like, I am like the classic case of a multi hyphenate. Like, I literally a multi what? Yeah, you know, what? Never do that. <laughs> no. no. Okay, I'm teaching you words. Yes, yes indeed. Oh. Multi hyphenate. Okay. So it's someone who like has different skills and makes money in like different ways. So you don't. Mm. It's, it's like you don't. You're not just a nine to fiver. Yeah. You. You guys are multi-hyphenates because you mm-hmm. run different businesses. You mm-hmm. you, you make monies in different ways. Mm-hmm. Monies. Um, monies. So I am, so obviously I'm a money and mindset expert. So anything yeah. to do with money mindset, I'm like coaching people one-to-one, group coaching. I'm going into businesses and like coaching their employees. Crazy. Oh, I didn't even know you did that. Yeah. Oh. Like, so that's like an arm of the coaching part. Okay. I do like financial well-being, speaking, educating. I've mm-hmm. obviously got all of my socials. So yeah. like TikTok. 
Instagram. I've got a podcast. I host my podcast. Amazing. What's it called? It's called Mind Money Soul. Go check it out, people. <laughs> it's all about the emotional, the practical, and the spiritual sides of money. Okay. And yeah, and then I do a lot of like brand deals. I work with brands. So there is so there are so many different like parts to my job that mm-hmm. I do that sometimes I'm like I've I'm this is mental. Yeah. How many different, like, there's something new every day. Like yeah. I a job that I did recently was I created some financial well being videos mm-hmm. that went into the um, NHS recommended wellness app. Okay. It's given <laughs> yeah. to like wow. employees for perks. That so is like hard. your like you know your company might go oh as part of being an employee you get access to this app my video wow. that so people can learn about financial. The whole work. NHS. It's not the NHS. It's NHS recommended. So it's like the top app. Wow. I, I want to ask you a question off that though. Would you have thought five years ago you'd be where you are right now? So five years ago I was 24. So no. Five, four, five, five years ago I was having what you could class as a quarter life crisis. Wow. I know. Guys, let's pause right there before you go any further. Guys, I know I keep going to this encouragement thing but please, 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 please <laughs> understand. Look where she's come in five years. Mm. Like she's speaking at all these massive companies now. She's got brand deals. She's speaking. She's making money. She's helping people make money. Making monies. And I was monies. And I was five. <laughs> and five. But five years ago, she said she was going through a quarter life crisis. Mm-hmm. Do you know your life could actually change in in day? Your life could change in in, in months, in years, and your testament to that. Mm-hmm. So I just want to just put a pin there, just to remind people that life can change as long as you're consistent, put the work in, and most importantly, as John said, have the right foundations because your foundations were correct, mm-hmm. even though you didn't know it back then. Yeah. But now look at you now. You're reaping the you're reaping the fruits of what you sowed previously in life. That's so, just dope. so what was going on there in terms of the quarter life crisis? Dope. So, I had I basically decided I wanted to go to drama school when I was mm-hmm. well when I was young, right? right? So I get to 18, didn't go to university. Mm-hmm. I was like said bye to my friends who went off to university. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to get a job, so mm-hmm. I got a sales job in a marketing company, and I was just like making money you know showing up to this job every day and being a bit like oh I feel a bit like lost I I need to figure out how to save this money so I can get to drama school that's why I was there so I saved this huge I saved 15 grand Um, sorry you were how old 19 okay so it's back to 19 okay yeah yeah yeah. so sorry so when I was 19 I was saving like saving this money right right so I ended up going traveling instead spending it all when I was traveling when I was in Australia I had this moment of like I don't think the actor life is for me. I've just wow. spent, I know, it was like massive identity crisis. I just spent three years in a full-time job saving mm-hmm. 15 grand so I could get to drama school. Mm-hmm. And then last minute decided to spend that money traveling. And when I was in Australia, I was like... As in 15 grand? Yeah. Traveling? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that money was sat there and I was literally like, it was two weeks before I was due to go to drama school, like full-time. So I've gone from being like full-time job, weekend drama school, to then I've got... I've got a place at a full-time drama school so you go there like school like a university and um two weeks before I was due to start two of my best friends were like do you want to come traveling and I was like oh I literally got to make this decision really quickly and decided to go with them like how often do you have the money and the time to go traveling around the world with two best mates like this is a once in a lifetime opportunity and there was obviously also something in my gut that was telling me drama school wasn't right what mm. was it? What like what was what? going on within you? Why are you thinking that? Because obviously you're saying all this time you want to be an actor. You're saving up to go to drama school. What changed? Yeah. What, what changed, changed beforehand yeah. for you to be like now? Nah. Well, you think I've got into a full time job, yeah, making money yeah. every month. Yeah, I'm realizing that I'm good at other things. Okay, and I had an agent, so I was already getting some acting jobs. Okay, so you don't have to go to drama school. It's a bit like university. You don't have to go to do business course just to run business. Mm-hmm. It's a bit like that. Case study right here. Case Come on, <laughs> <laughs> and um, with you as well. Yeah, yeah, case study, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I got to the same. <laughs> <laughs> Two out of three is good. Yeah, well. um, and like I drum, it's really competitive. So mm-hmm. I would walk into a room to do a casting, and there would just be ten other people that looked carbon copies of me are you um, serious it's the weirdest thing yeah is it typecasting yeah like some, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that like, blonde short cute girls <laughs> <laughs> is that literally what, is that what yeah. they'll do yeah what? and obviously it's not always like that yeah but, but sometimes they look for a specific type of person yeah for a particular so I, role yeah and I just mm. remember this one time walking into this room seeing a group of people that just look like me and I was like oh my god this is so like you're, there is so much competition and it's mm-hmm. not that I was afraid of the competition but I think there was just I don't know. I don't know. There was, I couldn't even tell what it was, but like there was obviously something that was making me go, this isn't for me. And I think mm. those three years 
out of school in a very new environment, making money. I was like, maybe there's a different, maybe there is something different I want. And I realized that when I was traveling, mm-hmm. like traveling, I don't know if either of you have gone like traveling like really far or like for a long period of time. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. Not yet. Not mm-hmm. yet. Like it is a life changing experience. Wow. It changed me as a person. Wow. Yeah. Like it was amazing. We did like Australia, Bali, Thailand, Cambodia, Malaysia, and New Zealand. Wow. It was amazing. Mm. But when I was there, I was like, oh, Maybe I wanted to still act, but I didn't want to have to, I didn't want to go back into school. Mm. I didn't want to like, I was kind of done with education in that respect. Like, yeah, hardcore. yeah. Um, and I was like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. Like all of my friends were in careers mm-hmm. that was like their dream career path. Mm-hmm. So I was like, how am I the only one now? Like, so it went from like kind of knowing what, well, knowing what I wanted to do to yeah. then changing my mind, having an identity crisis. Because every time I went to a party, it'd be like, oh, this is Laura, the actor. So then I, oh, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Then suddenly you're going, I don't know if I want to be an actor. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's this weird, you know, it's been my dream since I was yeah, 12 and now yeah. I've changed my mind. Like, yeah. it's really is, is it okay to change my mind? Wow. Yeah. My mind, like, just, just, have I been lying to myself? Am I wow. lying to myself right now? Like, mm. so many questions. Wait, so this was the crisis before the quarter life crisis? This was, this is the, the what started the quarter life crisis. Oh, so it started from when you were like, what, 20? 21 was when I ended up, 22 is when I went to Australia. Okay. Yeah. So and yeah. By, by this time, you you save how much? 15 grand. 15 grand, and you spent that going to Australia? Australia. Yeah, okay. I spent it whilst I was there. You whilst know, you were there. Things like scuba diving, skydiving, like all the cool stuff. I literally did everything. It must have been a lot of cool yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> 15 grand, because it's quite, isn't it quite cheap out there. You went to move from place to place. Yeah, but I we we I, I was out there for like eight months. Okay. So that was it was Asia where right. well. we did the East Coast. See that make New that makes sense. Because you have to do flights, you have to do accommodation, yeah. um, you have to do the activities as well, like yeah. as you said, the scuba, all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. That makes sense. And I saved myself a little bit of money so that when I get home I could buy a car because I knew that I'd need to get home. Okay, right. So right. I, put little, I put like two grand aside. So you've always been good at saving? Always been good at saving. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. We can talk about that forever, but let's let's talk about the saving part of it. Because yeah. You said fifty. You say fifteen k in three years. Yeah, from nineteen to twenty two. Yeah, what's the biggest tips for someone who wants to start saving? So I think like when it comes to saving, it's this acknowledgement of what's more important is the habit. Okay, mm-hmm. I think people like come up with a big number that they want to save, yeah. and then they're like, well, I don't know how I'm gonna get like how I'm gonna get there, and it's like you just have to start. Okay, like if I if you think like little 19 year old Laura who came from a family that didn't have a lot of money is going mm-hmm. I want 15 grand like that was so much money mm-hmm. like an insane but I didn't let that deter me I didn't go oh well it's a big amount there's no point I'm never going to be able to save that I was like right just start somewhere so I think really knowing your numbers where your money is going is so important because a lot of the time people say I don't have enough to save mm-hmm. and then I'll sit down with them and I'll go well where's your money going and either they don't know Speak about that mm-hmm. yeah and yeah. it's like they either don't know or they do know, but they're the way they prioritize things. It's like, that's are it. you actually happy with where all of that money is going? Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that, we'll, talk, we'll talk about it later on, but that's, that's the psychology of money, the mindset, the emotional part of mm-hmm. money. That is so interesting. Okay, cool. And they, they, they won't, sorry, I just wanted yeah, to say, as well, they, they won't always know where their money's going because they never, they never look at it. Yeah. They never look at their bank statement and say, okay, so my money's going here, 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 here. And one thing I've learned is you can't master what you don't measure. Ooh. So you need to be able to measure what you want to master. You want to be able to master your money. You need to be able to measure it. You need to see what's going where, why it's going there, mm-hmm. how much you're spending there in the places you should or shouldn't be spending. And that's what I guess you help your people with, your clients with. 100%. And like, I, and what I love is like I've already done it mm-hmm. it's not me telling people to do something I haven't done like yeah. when I was 19 yeah. Yeah. yeah when I was 19 I remember being sat in the office I taught myself how to use a spreadsheet like because there was not really like budgeting tools and mm-hmm. stuff like that at the time I'm sure there was like really like annoying old fuddy daddy ones but yeah. like that now there's loads of cool ones just yeah. apps and stuff yeah. that wasn't like that so I made myself this spreadsheet okay. and at the time I was like I would literally every single penny I would spend would be like in the spreadsheet. Wow, it's wow. what I needed to do mm-hmm. to know where my money was going to hit that 15k because I was like that's on good. payday I was pay- like and that's another tip is that paying yourself first. Like I would literally get paid. Mm-hmm. The second that money came in I was deciding where it went mm-hmm. and saving always came first. Mm-hmm. And because I kn- I had this goal and I was so like I have to hit it. I would always put as much as I could towards it and I would just work with what I've got left. And yeah, you've got to know what's going on with your money and make those choices with that. And like, and obviously it's a bit different if you're having a regular like income. Mm-hmm. But it's not an excuse to not save. You can't. Yeah. Two questions: How is it like letting go short term pleasures? And I'm assuming in the in the three years you're saving up, you're there's so many things that came up which mm-hmm. you're like, oh, I wish I could do that, but I can't. You know the ones there. Mm-hmm. So how was that like for you? How do you deal with that? So my, I guess, like short term pleasures that I cut out yeah. were things like. I didn't buy clothes. Oh, wow. I didn't mm-hmm. buy clothes. I For three years? Pretty much. 
Like there'd be, I'd, I'd go to like charity shops and I would, I might buy something wow. new every now and again. But I got a lot of hand me downs. Like yeah. I would just take my friends' clothes. Mm. Wow. They would love shopping, yeah. and then they'd be done with them. And I'd be like, I love that. Mm -hmm. Like so, I look at so many of my old pictures and be like, oh, that was your dress. Do you remember? Like, <laughs> and and like my friends, I was really lucky. Like I had really decent friends. Yeah. They still took the piss out of me though. Yeah. I'm like oh, why don't someone give that to Laura? I'm like, yeah, I will take it. <laughs> yeah. like, but then I had 15 grand at the bank. <laughs> wow, no, who's laughing now? Who's laughing now? Who's laughing, laughing, laughing now, friends? And a, now? a lot of people that age can't say that. Yeah. A lot of people at 21 Dude. can't say that they have 15 grand to their name. They can say they have much in debt. Yeah. But they can't say that they have that to their name in terms of exactly. being able to actually spend it. Yeah. And you're able to take that 15 grand and you had choices. Yeah. When you're able to take it. Yeah. Mm, I like you know what? My light bulb moment was when I was deciding between drama school mm -hmm. and traveling. Mm -hmm. I did not have to decide based on which one I could afford. I got to decide based on which one I wanted to do. Choices. I had that money sat there. Choices. And I was like, money gives you, yeah, freedom of option and choice. Having money gives you, <laughs> gives you, you know yeah, so powerful? gives you the option. <laughs> you know what's so powerful? I was talking about this, and I, I love, I love bringing up therapy. I'm a big believer in therapy. I think we spoke about, this, we spoke about this before. Mm -hmm. My, my therapist said something to me which was so freeing to me, which for so many years I just didn't understand. But now looking back at it, it's so true. Life is all about choices. So you have to, obviously I'm not talking about this situation here, but life's all about choices. So you have a choice with, with, with what you want to do with the with the skill sets or the resources that you have. You had a choice to save the money. Or you, could, you had a choice also to spend the money and doing silly stuff, but you saved the money and I look at you now. It actually paved the way to what you do today. 100%. And I think like, I still, I still did things. I still went on holidays. Okay. With my girls. Okay. I still had nights out. Yeah, yeah. But like, I would be the one finding the deals. Like, mm -hmm. whenever we went on holiday, I'm like, tr I'm such a good deal finder for mm. like when I go traveling. Like, good. find all the deals. Like, when we'd go out, we would like do things a bit cheap. I would just be aware of what I was, like, I guess, That's spending. really good. Um, but I also, whilst I had my full time job about 19, I was doing other jobs. Mm -hmm. Like, I had an agent. So I was doing a couple of acting jobs. I used to do this other acting, which is like um, role play for medical school. Like, I did, and all of that oh, money right. okay. would go into my savings. Mm. So, like, it was it was constantly getting turbocharged. Yeah. You know I mean, by all, I used to like make random things and sell it on Etsy because I love crafts. Like, oh. there was all these things I used to do. I was always like, oh, how can I make more money? So you always, oh, it's not multi punctuated. What were you? Multi hyphenated. Multi hyphenated. Hi hyphened? Hyphenated. You're my, my multi hyphener. I don't know how you make it a verb. <laughs> so you, you were always doing that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, amazing. You're making, money, you're making money in different ways too, yeah. which is actually interesting because I would have just, I just assumed you made money just from your full time. Five, yeah. Five. Wow. My second part of the question I wanted to ask you because I said there was two parts to it, right? You spoke about how you made 15K. I think you said a bit earlier on. In fact, we spoke about earlier on, right? How people, when you told them that story, when you told that story on TikTok, you see, I've got that in there nicely. When you put that story on TikTok, how you made 15K, and also we're going to get to the other part you saved too. People just assume, because of like you're white, and you look like you come from privilege, mm -hmm. apparently, that you just got it saved, You got, that someone just gave it to you. How, how, how do you deal with that? And can you like explain that a bit more? Yeah, so I basically put up a video on TikTok you know, classic user hook. I say 15 grand in three years, which it wasn't even bending the truth. That was mm -hmm. the exact truth. Yeah. Um, And, you know, it went viral. Mm. I, think, I think I had like about 300,000 views on it. And some of the comments were like, daddy's money. She's obviously a Tory. Um, she, <laughs> I was like, do not insult me. <laughs> like she's obviously a Tory. She, you know, she was given this money. She wow. couldn't have done this herself. And it's really funny because when people troll you, mm. sometimes they talk as though they're not commenting on your post. They say like she mm -hmm. or her. And I'm like, you do realize this is my it's you. Video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say you can talk to me. Yeah. Um, oh. Yes. Yeah, so interesting. The, I've never really thought of that because yeah, like, really, she, they're talking to other people. Yeah. Who are also going to be in the comments? Yeah, but, oh, yeah she's yeah. Yeah. There. yeah. As though I'm not a real person behind it. Wow. Now, luckily, I literally couldn't have. Mm. Really. Mm. Like I looked at it and I was like, "Lol," yeah. because I know what I've done. You know your truth. And yeah, and I think sometimes you get you get more affected, don't you, by something when you yourself, part of your belief system, you think there's a bit of truth. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. someone calls you ugly, and deep down you really think you are you are ugly. Yeah. You're like, oh, that's actually really hurt my feelings. But if someone called me bald, I'd be like, "No, I'm not." I'm going to Look at this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. But like, so people would say that, and I'd be like. All right, mm. that's just on you. And it, it, it it's one of those things, it's more of a reflection. Like, I'm sorry that you can't see my success and be happy for me. Like, that's okay. You've got mm. some work to do. 100%. Um, but th I think it's quite common. People do just make those assumptions around, like... I think it's super sad, you know, because obviously, like, we, we spoke about this earlier on. We had someone who came on our podcast and he came from... He didn't come from... He didn't come from Wealth either. Big up James, man. Big up James, man. You talk about how, like, obviously... 
technically it could be quite controversial, but he said how for him, he was looking forward to a recession because for him, he he's in the property space. So obviously when, it's come, when it comes to a recession, they have the capacity now to get houses at a cheaper value, which means they can make more money when the time comes to selling. And people are like, oh yeah, privilege, daddy's money. But it's like, they don't know where you come from to get to the point. So I just think it's really sad. And it, just, it kind of opened my eyes too, like hearing what you said and hearing what he said too, because I, like, I, you just assume like, obviously being a black man, that people that this type of behavior will come towards you, but I didn't think I didn't know how it affect you on the other end of the of the spectrum. So it's quite interesting to see like how people just use the stereotypes to put you in a box, yeah. Which is people like to assume. People, people like to assume, and and I'm always like, you don't know my story. Like yeah. it's that classic visual of like where you see you know the line, and it's like this is how much you know, but this is how much has actually happened. It's mm. like you, and it's it's even little things like when you meet someone for the first time and you get chat with them and we naturally will make an assumption mm. and then maybe you learn more about them and you're like, oh my God, I never would have thought that. It's like, mm-hmm. you can never guess someone's story. Mm-hmm. Like, and I, that's why I love, I think like people are so interested. I love hearing people's stories, mm. like what, what they've been through. But I don't know, when when people make those kind of assumptions and put it on you, it's more of a reflection on them. 100%. 100%. And we spoke about just a minute well, earlier on, we spoke about a lot of things downstairs. Mm. <laughs> but one thing for sure, right, the reason why people assume, one, because it's faster. Yeah. And two, look at the platform they're looking. Look at the platform they're talking to you on, TikTok, TikTok, or Instagram. These are platforms which are optimized for you to have quick opinions because they're quick videos. So for them, it's a quick thing for them to be like, "Oh, she's just privileged." When really and truly, you took years to get to this point. But people don't people don't see it like that because it's easier for people to just put you in a box. Yeah. People are trying to give themselves a reason as to why they're not there, yeah. why they're not where you are. So they're saying, oh, she can't have done, done this by normal means or yeah. legal yeah. means. She's probably been selling coke. Yeah. She's probably been giving <laughs> this back. Dealer. Probably a yeah. drug dealer. She yeah. probably got this from, from her parents. Yeah. yeah. But that's just them rationalizing it in their head. Yeah. And I think like I'm aware of the privilege that I had that during that t- time period, the 19 to, 50 to 22, where I saved 15 grand, I was living at home. Yeah. Now, I wasn't rent free. Mm-hmm. I still gave my mum some money. I still paid for some bills. Big up like, mommy, I still man. contributed. Mm-hmm. Big up mommy. Big up, big up mommy. Um, <laughs> Thanks, girl. Um, I bought my own. I used to do my own food shop. Like, so I still. It wasn't. I wasn't living in a home where I didn't pay anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which I know some people get. But I also wasn't living in a home where I was responsible for the mortgage or whatever. Mm. Which I know some people are. Mm -hmm. But that being said, you know, I've said this before. Like, there were situations where I've had to bail bail my own dad out for parts of that. Like, and Mm. I was able to do that because I had the cash. Choices. Mm. Choice. So it's like, but people don't know that. I'm not gonna. It's not like I come on. I'm not gonna go on TikTok every single time. I'm like, I'm just gonna quickly tell you my story. <laughs> like, you jump in. These videos will be so long. <laughs> you don't yeah. need to. They don't. They don't, they don't need to know that. Exactly. So okay. Let's before we, let's run this topic off here about saving. Yeah, because we talk about saving before we go to the next topic. Give us three quick fire tips for the people right now. How to improve their capacity to save. Okay. Or do you want? To, is there anything else? Is there oh, anything? I like else? that. You like that? Yeah, I like that. Okay. Number yeah. one. Number one. Number one. Um, if you can automate your finances, okay. So automate your savings. That's a practical one. Like take the emotion out of it. Either on payday or at certain points of the month, just set up a direct debit where you take some money from your savings account and moves it. Dope, dope, easy, dope. Number two, view yourself as a saver. If you are constantly walking around like, well, I'm a spender. I've never been a saver. I've never been able to save. Let me tell you, you won't be able to save. Mm. That you are going to stay stuck in that belief about yourself that you aren't someone who can save. It's good. So see yourself as a saver. Like I convinced myself, I'm going to save 15 grand. I was so delusional, but it worked. And three. Sorry, I just want to say someone at the back of that. That's why mindset is so important. Yeah. That's why mindset is so important, even when it comes to money and when it comes to anything. Even if you're trying to give up smoking, yeah. you say, I don't smoke anymore. Yeah. You don't say, I'm trying to stop smoking. Because okay. people still give you cigarettes. Yeah. But if you say, I don't smoke anymore, then what's the point in giving them a cigarette if you don't smoke anymore? Yeah. Even drinkers as well, the same thing as well. But sorry, yeah. continue. Lord. Just so it's just a drop of that. Oh, that's my We're problem. jumping off everything, yeah, man. Jump in. Tag in, man. What is mindset? Mindset is how you set your mind. How do you set your mind? It's what the things you say to yourself when no one's watching. Yeah. That's what you that's how that's what mindset is. Who are you when nobody's watching you? What do you say about yourself when nobody's watching you? So I'm sure by the fruits of what happened with the 15K, they all tell yourself when nobody's watching, I am a saver. I am this. I am that. You affirm yourself with the right words. So then when you put the seeds into the ground, it came up beautifully. And you tell other people too. You tell other people too. And that's so beautiful. So guys, don't sleep on that point there. How are you setting your mind? Because of course we live in a a culture whereby we are consumers, but hold on. What about you? What about your goals? Sometimes you need to save to get to the next point and you proved that. So yeah. I like that point there. Thank you. Mm. Well, number three, what I was going to say actually was about having goals. I know that people say, 
or I have a lot like for my audience like oh I'm not really saving for anything because I don't really have anything to save for mm-hmm. like, I'm telling you now there will always be something It'll you need to be something. Mm. unless you plan to go off grid live off the land and have <laughs> yeah. a little cottage where you make your own cabbages yeah. and just eat you that like cabbages just pure cabbage <laughs> <laughs> fair enough that's a meaty grub <laughs> no, for real. do you like cabbage uh, it's alright <laughs> fair enough <laughs> but like you're always going to have to partake in society which means you're always going to need money yeah, so like don't true. like get involved take part of the game and set yourself a goal whatever that looks like because for me my goal drama school it changed right at the last minute it didn't mm. matter that the purpose of it's that crazy, money changed man. but at least I had the money there yeah mm. that it's okay if the goal changes so think about and why wouldn't we think about what we want in the future and start to work towards that yeah. like that is del- like delayed gratification is saving like yeah. the two literally go so hand in hand beautiful. so really learning how to delay your gratification for beautiful. future goals is beautiful I love that I love that I mean I think it's a really good way to round this topic off if you got to say on that whole topic they're saving bro no let's get to the next part so get straight to it man I, so think was, we should, I think we should return to the story so you were talking about 19 to 21 was it 19, 18 to 20 18 to 1922 that's when you say the 15. Mm. What's the next part? Because we're just leading up to this core life crisis that I'm, I'm hearing and I want to know about. <laughs> so, um, in Australia, came back, got my old job back. My boss mm. gave me my job back. I got a promotion, got a pay rise, got a company car. Oh, wow, wow, wow. driving around the country. Okay. She's meeting people. Like, it was, it was cool. And, you know, at this point, I was only like 24. Okay. And I got to the point where what I realised was I... My belly bump, my belly bump. I didn't even hear it. <laughs> you heard that on the microphone. I have must eaten have, dinner. Must have been the cabbage. Word. <laughs> <laughs> to the water. Um, where I was like, right now, my job is helping other companies make money. Right. And that is not, that doesn't feel good. For, not doesn't feel good, but like it doesn't feel purposeful. Okay. I don't have a purpose right now. Ooh. And as we know, when you don't have purpose in life, it does make, whatever that purpose is, mm-hmm. it you have a lack of motivation, a yeah. lack of zest for life. And yeah. that's where I was re- like leaning into. And I've got all my friends around me in their dream careers. Mm-hmm. And that's what, you know, I got to like 24. Wow. And I basically started saving more money mm-hmm. and moved to London. Mm-hmm. From... Um, what, from uh, Hertfordshire. So Hertfordshire, okay, okay. Not too far away. Yeah, not too far. Um, yeah, it's like, it's not even far on the train. Yeah. But I, it was about, yeah, 24, 25, where okay. I was like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? Yeah. I don't know. You don't get told all these like career options or, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I had this view of self-employment and entrepreneurship that was like way too scary. I can't set up my own business or like maybe I can't, you know, like all those Why things. Why was it scary? Because mm. my dad was self-employed. I right. never had any money. Right. So I was like, surely being self-employed is a really bad idea. Okay. So what you saw in your environment, you're like, okay, so that's what it looks like. I don't want to do that myself. Yeah. And I and I think it was more like deep down, I knew there was a part of me that would love to. I always thought I was going to have a conventional life, an unconventional life, because Mm -hmm. of wanting to be an actress. Right. So then when I was in a nine to five, it was like conflicting. So I was like, I'm kind of doing something I didn't think I was going to be doing. I'm good at it. Mm -hmm. I'm making good money, but it's not bringing me joy. Mm. So it's like this really weird like. And and comes down to choices, right? Because mm-hmm. I'm like, I am choosing to stay in this job right now because it's giving me financial security, and financial security is so important for me because mm-hmm. I can't rely on anyone else. Mm-hmm. I can't re- I can't go to my parents and go, oh, I need to pay my rent. Can you mm-hmm. pay it for me? They'll be like, no, you can't. You know? yeah. No, you can't do that. So yeah, I just kind of got to this place where it was just one of those moments where I was like, I know I'm destined for more, but I don't know what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and just had yeah, it was really intense and sad um and when i moved to london i basically was like right i'm gonna get a therapist i'm going to <laughs> thank you um i'm we gonna support that on the show <laughs> we do we do we love therapy we love same therapist now um you still, you still do therapy now yeah with the oh, same one the same lady from, from, from the quarter left so i did it for like 24 25 26 yeah took a little gap and yeah. then took it up about a year and a half ago dope man so, dope, dope 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 okay so, so this is so you were in Hertfordshire. And you said, okay, this quarter life crisis thing needs to stop. Yeah. I'm moving to London, getting a therapist. What was the other points that you got or so, other things that you did? So, yeah, moved to London, got a therapist. Now, when I moved to London, I said to my boss, like, I'm moving to London, so going to have to quit. And he was like, please don't quit. How about you work from home? So I started wow. working from home before before it was cool, before the pandemic. Yeah. Wow. The years before the pandemic. And I just got back into because what I'd fallen out of a little bit was like you know reading and things I'd you know mm. got back from Australia and I was kind of just like ah! and, <laughs> and I was like, I'm not doing the things that I know that keep me grounded mm. reading journaling yeah. all of those things and during that process and it, I'd sort of thought about it whilst I was in Australia but I was like right I need to set up a blog 
and just start talking. I love talking. I like, I've got so many things I want to say. Surely it's going to help someone do something. And mm. that is when I, re- when I just started, for, I had, there was like five categories on my blog. It was like money, uh, health, yoga, food and travel. Written blog. Written blog. Guys, a written blog, yeah, is something that people have on the <laughs> internet, right? You're probably used to watching vlogs. A vlog is a video blog. It's the video version of what Laura and more is talking about. Yeah? Sorry, continue, Laura. So, some people won't know. Some people won't know. We some people won't old know. Old school. Old school. I wanted to do a vlog. Okay. Because... Was this... Wait, when, was YouTube kicking at this time? YouTube was... It was it was happening, you know, yeah. at the time of like Zoella and like, uh, yeah. Zoella. Zoella. Yeah, even, yeah. even I know. You know. Even I know, yeah. Do you, Zoella, lost you ain't got a clue. It's like, clue. this is an old school, like, I'm talking... People were people were just I'm not starting to come up on yeah, yeah. starting to come up on YouTube. Yeah. There was like a whole YouTube community. People who really mm. I say even built the YouTube scene were coming up wow. at this time. But, but now now like now in 2023, it's like cool thing to do. Mm. Back then, like do, was KSI doing his thing back then? I think uh, was he even he might not even. A, I don't know actually. Wait, what year, what year was this? This was like 2018. 2018. Oh oh yeah, definitely. 100. Yeah, he'd been he'd been doing it for ages. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I didn't know everyone. Like I wasn't like super into it, but I just knew that it was a thing that you could do. And I really okay. wanted to do a vlog. Right. But I just didn't. I just didn't do it. Mm. I was like, a blog is easier. Yeah. Like I got a website made. I just started writing. Yeah. And but because Instagram was around at this point, I was like, what I'll do is I'll write blogs, but then I'll talk about it on Instagram. So it mm-hmm. was still like blogging. Mm-hmm. Um. But I just found myself writing about money, mm. and then it. And then I was like, oh, I think I want to carry on doing this Mm -hmm. this feels good and at this point obviously you know I've got some money saved I'm living in London I've got my therapist I had about 25 grand saved (laughs) okay (laughs) okay so well I had I probably I I got the 25 grand saved by the age of 27 okay I was probably at 10 (laughs) Mm -hmm. and yeah and then that's what kickstarted this being my career Mm. It like literally came from a quarter life crisis into going. I need to do something about this. I need to do things that bring me joy, whether it turns into a career or not. I just need to figure out what what's going to make me happy right now. Talking, writing, that kind of stuff. Just found myself talking about money, and here we are. What I always say is sometimes the breakdown will come before the breakthrough, yeah. mm. and that's what you experienced as well. What that's what I experienced too, multiple yeah. times in my life, and I'm sure that a lot of people have experienced the same thing. Many other people have experienced the same thing on this very show. Yep. It's funny, like loads. Of, one thing that all the guests have in common, they've all been through this thing. Yeah. They've all been through the breakdown and it's come to a breakthrough. Yeah. But I feel like it's the perspective of which you see that yeah. breakdown because some people let the breakdown break them down, yeah. and they will never get to the breakthrough. Yeah. And they'll stay in that place. And they'll stay in that place and they'll be broken down. You could still be in Hertfordshire. Yeah, I could. You could sad. still be there. Yeah. S- sad. Yeah. And still in that quarter life crisis. Yeah. Which has gone on for way too long. <laughs> it's gone for like five, six years. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But then in those five, six years, you've able to make you've been able to make something of your life you didn't even see yourself doing five years ago, five, six years it was ago. A career that didn't even exist, really. It didn't even exist, Laura and more. You made a lane for yourself, man. Mm. That's good. Though. And now people are calling on you. They're saying, yeah, c- can we get you to speak at here, there, everywhere? You weren't even thinking this was going to be a thing. Yeah. And funnily enough, what I've realized is uh, same thing with a lot of people, a lot of our other guests as well. Everything that you've done up until this point or up until that point of the breakdown has helped you become the person that you are today. 100%. The acting, the sales role as well. You had to speak to multiple different people on the phone. You had to persuade them to buy something. You had to work on your speaking skills, communication skills. All this stuff is helping you just like basically convey your message to your audience. Yeah. One of the biggest things as well that helped me working in that job is I had to part sales of job. job was yeah sales job yeah was um because it's the only job I've ever had. I worked there for ten years and then wow. I set up my business. Hold on a sec. Sorry. So it was the se- so it was. Oh, so sales was the first job you had and you went back to... Yeah. So they gave... That's the job they gave back yeah, to you. Yeah, they gave my job back. Right. Well, they gave me my job back, but it was a new version of it. Okay, okay. So I was like an account exec and account right. manager, but I came back as a business development manager, which is BD. why I got my car and I'm driving them around. Oh, okay. I learned how to pitch. Yeah. So I would write pitch decks to go to companies and proposals yeah. to be like, we've you know, we know what you want. This is how much it will cost. I used to work out the costings. And then I would present it to them and try and sell it to them that has helped me so much now because i obviously do proposals for brand deals and i've wow. pretty much got everyone Crazy. that i've ever put like pitched mm-hmm. and i've shared you know like my pitch decks with with like other influencers and they're like oh i literally just pop it in an email <laughs> whereas i've got this full-on you know but i only knew that from doing my yeah job. so it's like all these little things that add up to the the moment that we're at now absolutely it's, it's crazy absolutely. Like, so you, could, you, you could have never have known if you'd have asked me five years ago i'd have been like 
probably still crying. Wow. <laughs> so what we trying to what we trying what we trying to say here? We're trying to say to you guys. Yeah. Every single setback in your life, which feels like a setback in this very second, isn't necessarily just there to be a setback. It's there to build you up. As we like to, as we always say on this podcast and this show, every single setback isn't there to set you back. It's there to push you forward. So guys, take the lessons from the season. And as John said, rightfully so, have the right mindset and set your mind in the right way to believe that things are working for you, not against you. I can't lie to you. It is difficult at times. It's not easy. I'm not just saying, oh, just make, it's hard at the moment. And it's okay to feel the emotions, but after the emotions move to the side, say to yourself, how does this work on me? How does it make me a better person? But that's one thing I've done in my life too. I'm sure you guys have also. It's helped me be like, okay, this is working for me. I've had some hard times. Hard times, man. Still, uh, make, making a business. Hard times, um, um, what's it called? Finally through the podcast, what we've been doing. But I'm always saying to myself, how is this helping me? And now looking back at it now, or looking at, looking at it now from this point of view, I'm like, okay, this is still... This is this helped me for this reason here. And I'm still learning in this very second. So guys, please, please, please be open to understanding that your setbacks aren't there just to break you down, they're there to propel you to the next point. Yeah, your set your setbacks are setting you up for your comeback. Yeah. That's one thing that we said before. Yeah. And we'll say it again. <laughs> say it we'll again, say it know? again. But you know what? You said a very good point there, Broski. You know, I mean? I've got to champion my brother, man. If I don't, who will? Mm. But you said you spoke about careers, bro. Yeah. And now I want to talk to you about your career. Because obviously you are a money mindset expert. I want to talk to you guys. I want to talk to you more about the mm. psychological part of it, mm. the emotional part of it, because that's a very big part of money. People just see money just as money, mm. but there's a lot more to it. So let's let's kind of break that down. Mm. So like people just assume that because money is like numbers and mm -hmm. practical stuff and spreadsheets, that it's all a logical and practical thing, but it's not. Money is emotional. Mm. We make our decisions about money from a place of emotion first, and then we justify it with logic. Facts. So whether you're feeling, and it could be any kind of emotion, it could be stress, loneliness, happiness, boredom, whatever it is, you're going to get triggered potentially to spend or handle money in a certain way off the back of an emotion. The most common one being fear. People make a lot of decisions about money, out of fear, whether they you know, make their investing decisions. There's an amazing book called The Psychology of Money, which talks about the emotions when it comes to investing. I've heard of it. And it's so good. Mm. But like with really understanding how your your money beliefs were formed because your money mindset is basically just the unique set of attitudes and beliefs that you have about money that drive how you handle it mm. so your money beliefs are essentially the stories that you tell yourself about what you believe to be true about money and that is that comes from your money story so everything we all have in common we all have a money story here mm -hmm. it's going to look different for everyone but mm. basically on a psychological level you're, when you're between the ages of zero to seven, or technically minus nine months, because it starts from being in the womb. Does it? It's mental. What? Yeah, I know. Even as being an embryo or whatever, and you're turning into a... You, the, the energy the, Because energy is it's not just off of like what you see, it's also off of energy. Okay. So that's you can a, pick up trauma from that's a your good own mum and your grandma. Wow. That's what even real... Grandma? Yeah, because... <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, that was not me. <laughs> grandma. But because... If you think about it, yeah. when your when your mum was a baby in your grandma's be belly, by three <laughs> womb, womb, yeah, um, you were one of the eggs yeah. in her womb. Because oh. basically, when a woman is born, she's born with all of the eggs that she has for the rest of oh, her life. You wow. don't regenerate them; they all live within you. Yeah. You're gonna have a certain amount. Okay. So, uh, oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, when yeah. Your mum is being. Oh wow! Finite. Finite. When your mum is being, what is it like? Constantly. When your mum when your mum is cooking in the oven yeah. with your grandma, <laughs> like that. you good. are in there too. So if your grandma's mm. having some hard times, that yeah. passes down not only into your mum, but also into you. So generational yeah. trauma is like a fit biological thing. Real life. Wow. I yeah. know. Because we, we always talk about generational trauma, generational um whatever. Yeah. But we don't say it biologically like yeah. that. You just opened my mind. That's crazy. It's mad, isn't it? That's crazy. So when it comes to money, mm. money, because it's such an emotional thing, obviously, even if even if people aren't saying certain things, mm -hmm. people are still there's still like an energy. There's still like an energy. Hundred percent. But you know, it's yeah. a real thing. So your money story, like between the ages of minus nine months to seven years old, your brain waves are at a different state to the what we are right now. Is it? Isn't there theta, theta, beta, 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 alpha? So when you're alpha. younger, it's theta. Okay. So between the ages of zero to seven. So it's basically at that point you haven't formed your analytical mind. Okay. So you are not going. 
I hear something. Hmm, is that true? Should I believe that? You're just hearing everything, and you go, okay, yeah, okay. Just because it in. the people bigger than you and older than you, you're like, that's what you're learning from the world. Mm-hmm. So you're everything you learn, hear, see, experience is being lodged into your subconscious. Programming as you. fact. It's yeah. Programming you. Yeah, yeah. So then, by the time obviously you're getting older, between the ages of about eight to eighteen, your brain waves obviously change again. You're kind of like subconsciously testing these theories Mm -hmm. out and a lot of the time because you're sitting in the same household you're sitting around the same people these beliefs are being reaffirmed with similar Mm -hmm. experiences similar words memories and stuff like that so by the time you're an adult that stuff is stapled in Mm -hmm. so your money beliefs then are so fully what you believe to be true concrete that's what creates part of your money mindset. And that's so so hard from such a young age. We don't have control really over what happens to people from zero to seven. Not at all. But I always say, I think people hear that sometimes and they're like, oh my God, like if I don't have control, well now what? It's like everything is changeable. Your, mm-hmm. your brain has neuroplasticity. So you can create new, new neural pathways. That's it. Change. Mm-hmm. And that's the power of it. What people don't realize is that connection to money is all habitual, subconscious, emotional, as opposed to just logical because otherwise you'd ask why is it that people have good bits of information aka spend less than you earn invest your money it's good information we all know it Mm -hmm. and then don't make good choices Mm -hmm. and that is because in between that there is a you have to have a good decision making process Mm -hmm. and also you have to have a good relationship with yourself Mm -hmm. and those are two things that impact that process so it's a your 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 mental state has to be in a good place and that's what gets in the way of people making good money decisions because it's so emotional it really does like a lot of these things really do come down to the down to decision making Mm. as decisions like i I heard this quote the other day and i told you this as well Mm. the caliber of life that you live is determined by the caliber of decisions that you make Mm. and that's so real and every time that you talk about decisions and even when you just spoke about decisions just then laura it's just become even more real. It's literally, you decide the kind of life that you want to live. You can reprogram your mind. Yeah. And you were reprogramming your mind, even if you probably didn't know it at that time, when you're reading those self-help books at 16. Yes, 100%. Like some of the books that mm-hmm. I read at that 16, 17, 18, like, you know, some of the classics, like The Power of Now and yeah. things like that. You read Rich Dad, Poor Dad? But Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I thought so, because he talks about paying yourself first. He yeah, talks about paying yourself first in that. Book. Yeah. Like, and lo- some very spiritual ones, mm-hmm. like, it has an impact on how you view yourself Mm. and I think the issue with money is like you not you have there's a range of different beliefs right you've got family beliefs Mm -hmm. generational beliefs Mm -hmm. you've got religious beliefs so how different religions view money oh Laura you've got societal beliefs talk about that (laughs) no because religion like those ones are strong you know because a lot of people think that um, what is it the um, the the, uh, the love of money no sorry money is the root of all evil Yeah. but the actual verse is the love of money yeah the love of money is the root of all evil yeah. and people get that wrong and then people see oh yeah um, money is the root of evil don't have money money's yeah. terrible yeah. Really just like in the Christian faith a lot of people yeah. I don't want to generalize but quite a lot of people yeah. see money as like a negative a bad thing because yeah. what you just said yeah. like the love of money is the root of all evil but it's not the love of, it's not the love of money is the yeah. root of all evil is loving the money can lead to you doing some bad things but money in itself is not a bad thing yeah so it's, it's not money is the root of all evil but it's the love yeah. the love of, of the money is the yeah. bad thing because Money, as you said, money just what is money? Money is just an exchange of value. Yeah. That's it, yeah. If you love it and you start to put on a pedestal, that's when you could do some bad things. Well, and what I always say is like, I always say these two things, right? Money is a tool. So it's neither good or bad. Yeah. It is the emotion that we as humans attach to money. Yeah. Because how can money, which is just a factual thing, be amazing for one person and awful for the other person? Mm-hmm. It's how they view it. 100%. But it's just a tool to, to get you to where you want to be. Question. Tell me. For you, because you say you grew up and you said how like when you were younger it, was, it wasn't easy for you financially yeah. and now you say you had this mindset and now what was your mindset because we we'll speak about mindset money what was your mindset then to, to now like, mm-hmm. how, was, how has that changed? So when I was like younger and yeah. I was like just sort of I guess experiencing what I'd viewed with my parents and like I when I got my first my first job mm. like I was 16 I worked at Argos to leader. Ooh, um, you believe you believe it from time no word Leader in my heart. Come on. Lead, 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 leader, in the, leader in the physical too. <laughs> Trust me, you're dead, it, man. Come on. Um, I straight away, as soon as I started making money, mm-hmm. I started saving. However, it came from a place of scarcity mm. because I was so scared because what I see, you know, like see my dad make money wasn't, you know, the, wasn't didn't have any we didn't have any so then the second I started making money I was like I need to hold on to this mm-hmm. so from a place of lack it led me to be a saver so even wow. though was, the consequence was great yeah. it all came from a place of fear which then also made me feel guilty whenever I spent it Ooh. that was hard one mm-hmm. so 
then as I kind of got older and I went for my financial coaching qualification as mm-hmm. part of that process, you obviously kind of financially coach yourself. You're really asking yourself these questions mm-hmm. like, what do I believe to be true about money? What did I learn from my parents? And what I learned is my biggest borrowed belief was that like money was hard to make and that came from my dad. So I was like, and I had to question it. Like, do I really believe that to be true? Because if there are other people, ignore my dad, other people out in the world, self-made millionaires, set business owners making loads of money that what I believe can't be true because it's not it has to be for something to be a cold hard fact it's got to apply it's got to be applicable to everyone yeah so then I was like oh this is just holding me back this is just Mm -hmm. stopping me from going Mm self-employed so I really had to work on my own money mindset to get to a point where I was able to enjoy my money to invest my money to be able to be a business owner like all of those things I had to really work for my own money beliefs to wow so at this time you're just saving but you weren't investing no know anything about investing at that point oh, with, with, a, with a 25 25k yeah. you didn't invest any of it that was sitting in the bank and the bank were, you know the bank were using that I they know. were smiling when they saw Laura they said they said every time Laura's put in they're smiling they said Laura's just logged up time to eat guys <laughs> <laughs> they'll take, the, they'll, they'll take their money me? they'll take the money and then they'll they'll do something with it they'll, they'll invest with it no. Oh, right now, guys, what Canary Wolf in it? So that's where all the banks are. So they're probably for real. Right now, be like, <laughs> they're, lo- they're like, Ian time, like, man. When, when, when they start walking, they said that she's back. <laughs> <laughs> My face is on like a wanted poster like, or like a vision board everywhere. Like, like that. Laura, Laura. Laura. And I'm like, this. Do you want, so it's a really funny story, right? How I learned about investing. For yeah, yeah. So, like you say, I've saved a big chunk of money. I'm so proud of it. I'm living it up in London. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I got 25 grand in the bank. I went on a date and it was a guy and he, he, he said to me, we were, t- we were chatting about it. Mm-hmm. About how much you had in the bank? Yeah, we were, t- okay. we were talking really openly about money. He ran right. his own business. Oh, dope. He was really into like trading watches, like okay. Ooh, and stuff. Nice. Amazing. And I was like, oh, cool. And he was like, oh, you should get into trading watches. And I was like, I don't care enough about watches t- to get into it. Yeah. And he was like, oh, but you invest in. Yeah. And I was like, uh, in myself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't know I mean, that's a good investment. It's a good investment. Very good investment. Yeah. Clearly. <laughs> But he was like, you do know, and I remember, I literally remember where we were sat. He was like, you do know by having 25, this 25 grand sat in the bank, you're losing money. Losing money, yeah. It's basically, it's basically, it's basically John. It was yeah. Basically, it was basically you there. That yeah, yeah. Was, I, was, I was the person on that day. <laughs> I was, that's literally what I would tell <laughs> someone, yeah. You were there. I tell people now, okay. like I have taken that on. I was, I, would, I was probably about, I must have been about 27, 28. And I was about up 27. Yeah. And I was like, what? And he was like, Oh, yeah. wow. Hold on. This was, this was like a year or um, a year or two ago. Oh, years ago. Three years ago. And nearly three years ago. I turned 30, so I was just as Wow. I know. You're never, too, you're never too late to begin, you know. Honestly. You're never too late to begin. So he told me, and he, I was like, what do you mean? He was like, should be, you know, and he explained roughly like, in, and obviously I was only just, this was around the time I was only just sort of, actually my, my sort of, finance career business was taken off. But it was like saving tips and budgeting tips. Mm-hmm. It was not about investing. Okay. Like, it, I didn't know anything about that. Right. I thought that was for old rich white men. You know, wow. Classic. So I was like, not for me. But where did that belief come from? Ooh. Society. Because mm. if you think about it, like all adverts, uh, you know, women have only been involved in the conversation with money. They've only been able to have bank accounts since like the 1950s. That's crazy. So we've only recently been allowed into the conversation. And mm-hmm. with investing, look at all the investing ads. Obviously it's changing now, but it's yeah. just old rich white men with yeah. suitcases like invest your money. Yeah. And there was this amazing um, piece of research done by Anne Bo- uh, I can't remember her last name Anne who runs Stalin yeah she um wait so I'm so sorry to cut you off here so, I've never actually heard someone who's white say a rich white man because I hear like black I, say, say, I hear it all the time though. I've never heard that before I hear you know? it all the time I hear a lot, lot of um, female uh, white CEOs they'll yeah. say that they'll, they'll say that quite a bit I've never heard that we'll before call it, we'll call them pale male styles pale, pale male styles pale style males pale style males I'll just, I'll just like Wow, she actually said that, you know. Because I never imagine like a black person say, "Oh yeah, these old black people." That's so interesting, you know. Like, sorry, I just uh, got please. Sat- Bro, you know what I'm talking about, though. You get me? Though? I hear it. I hear I it. <laughs> I was, in my head, I was just thinking, who is she talking about? I thought you were talking about Warren Buffett. Like when you when you think investing, yeah, yeah, you might yeah, think yeah. Warren Buffett because you're reading books and stuff. I was just trying to put two and two together. No, I just meant you just think it's just for like oh, okay. Rich white man. Yeah, yeah. That's just how I viewed it. Sorry, I just about thought, that's but right. please. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had, so, I had to. I had to. So, okay, so you, <laughs> so you were talking about. Okay, so you were you were um, speaking to him on the yeah. date, and then what was happening after that? So. Yeah, yeah. T- talk to me. So what I was going to say was there was this piece of research done yeah. that basically looked at all the language in articles and magazines aimed at men versus aimed at women. Now, when it's aimed at men, it's like invest in, build wealth, grow your money, luxury. Whereas mm-hmm. when all the... And it was like 
done like with the percentages. And then for women, it was like splurge, save your pennies, oh, well. budget, cut back. Oh, I know, fascinating. So you can imagine the types of articles that we're reading in women magazines versus what men are getting. Completely different. It's completely different. Yeah. So I was like, what the hell? So I went and I was like, right, I'm researching this. So I found this amazing article all about investing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why don't we know about this? And obviously at this point, my Instagram's kicking off. So I yeah. put up on Instagram all these amazing stats. And I was like, I have no clue how to invest, but I'm going to figure it out. out and I'm yeah. going to bring it to you people. That's and someone replied to me, guy, his name was Dave. I met him at a party once. Yeah. And he's a wealth manager. And he was like, Laura, I'm in agreement with you. I think the language is confusing. I think it's too overwhelming, but I think you, I, I, I want to explain it to you. Do you want to go for a drink? It's like, yeah. So we went to Brixton, we had a beer. Big up Brixton, man. Big up Brixton. Big up Brixton. Had a beer. And big, what was his name? Dave. Big up Dave, man. Big up Dave. We love you, Dave, man. You still alive now? He's still my mate, yeah. Big up Dave, Big up Dave. I always, I always, I always I, I owe my life to you. Um, and he, he, he just told me everything he knew about investing. That's so he dope. just broke it down for me and I was like, right. Okay. Where, did you, where did you meet him? A party, randomly. A party. A party yeah. This is why it's, it's important that you just speak yeah. to people yeah. and talk to people, network yeah. with people. Network. Because this so is I the kind of stuff that, that happens. Was his job. We just got along and went, do you want to add each other on Instagram? It was one of those. There you go. Mm. Saw it. And he told me about it and I was like, and I just remember going, if it's this easy, why don't we all know about it? Mm -hmm. Why aren't we all doing it? Mm -hmm. He was like, right? Yeah. So that, that I then spent about nine months doing my own research because I was, you know, I was like, I need to know all the information. Yeah. Pause. And then I got started. Nine months, bro. Nine months. That is so interesting. And then I my first investing. No, bro, no, I'm you're not getting it. You're not getting it. You're not understanding because we didn't explain it. Yeah, no, we did. We spoke about it earlier. Oh, you spoke... Oh, Rob, man. <laughs> no, no, but I, I left it for you, though, because actually... You left it for me. I, I said, I, I, I mentioned it. The you birth. mentioned it. You, 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 but you go... But seasons. You go, Ooh. But you go deeper, seasons. bro. Go, bro, go deeper. So deeper, what we've realised mm. with a lot of our guests is that when they go through a period of change mm -hmm. and growth, it takes like nine months. And that's the same period of time that it takes for what's happened. Yeah. That's exactly what happens. Nine months and then yeah. on the point of me learning and then doing my first investment. Just the and same then, time. And then I basically built up my investments yeah. and I am so passionate mm. about helping people learn how to invest which mm -hmm. is when I set up my mini investor course to help people figure it out Laura let me ask you a question right mm. why are people so scared to talk about money because I a couple of things I think one in the UK yeah. it's viewed as crude Mm. you talk about money that's really crude mm -hmm. okay. look at you going to a business you're not allowed to talk about your salary you get a little slap on the wrist you might get disciplinary like it's all is it yeah most oh, businesses wow. you're not allowed to talk about your it, obviously it's, it's very very private check, very private yeah especially like in big corporates you can't go around asking who's making what like you get in trouble that's I'm, I'm not I'm not used to that because yeah. for entrepreneurs it's like oh I'm doing X amount a month I'm doing X amount a month very, open. It's very amount open. open very open very open yeah 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 it's not yeah. like that because if you think about it in a workplace like mm. you don't really they don't want you to feel like you've got too much control over what you're making it's like wow. they, you don't know who's paying, be, being paid what so it's it's all yeah you can't talk about it wow on average obviously okay. I can't speak for it yeah for every company yeah so there's this like societal like element mm. of that and there's also so much shame attached to money, mm -hmm. you know, because we don't get taught this stuff. So then you maybe come out of uni with uni with student debt, or maybe your parents had debt, and that's what you were modelled. So you then had debt, and there's all this like, oh, you don't know how to manage your money. So it's all that kind of feeling. People don't like talking about stuff. They don't. Not everyone likes to talk about stuff that they don't really know about. So yeah, it's like, of course. It's this thing that has just bred mm. bigger and bigger, and is still around. And like, there's some stats that say people in Britain would rather talk about their sex life. Than money. It's real. Wow. It's real. Because it's easier. Do you know why? Because it's like a, it's like an easy, it's, it's a very easy conversation. Oh yeah, your sex life, this, this, that. But money's real. Yeah. But that's like, nuts. Yeah. It's right. But it's, it's so private. Well, yeah. It should be so private. But then, but then something which shouldn't be as private is being privatized. Oof. Don't let that, don't, listen to that one again. I wasn't trying to make that deep. I just <laughs> wanted to. I, I just wanted to say it. I was just. I was just. You just. I was just saying. Do you know what I mean? It's true. Like I mean, and it's crazy because you do start to realise that and a lot of people go, oh, mm. no, I don't talk to my partner or no, I don't talk. Or like in house. They're partners. Yeah, I have some clients who are like, no way. Oh, you know, like don't, I've got clients. That's the who first thing the missus and I have to talk about. Honestly, no, no, not the first. The, the first thing. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> How about she got your back? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it should be a very, it should be a very early conversation. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. 
If, if you're trying to take each other seriously, yeah. you need to speak about that. But sorry, you were saying um, some people with their, with their partners. Yeah, so, so, so wow. like clients I have or people I speak to in my community, like some don't talk to their partners about money. Some don't talk to their friends about money. Some, some you know, never had a conversation about money with their families. Oh God, we don't talk about that. Or they do, but maybe the conversations are always very heated. Wow. So what does that teach you? Just don't talk about it. Yeah. All the, they're so, and obviously, all that money's bad. All that money's bad. Yeah. It's like, why would we talk about it? Like, yeah. we shouldn't be wanting money. You know, like one of the classic ones is like, oh, as long as I've just got enough to pay my bills. Mm. You know like, what, yeah? More? Sorry to cut you off. And you're, you're about to say the same thing. You know how selfish it is as, as us, as human beings, for us just to want to have enough money to last this month. That's the most selfish thing we, we could ever do. And you're probably thinking, why is that? The reason why that's so selfish, right, is because we owe it to our future, our future family, our friends, our loved ones to have abundance. So then, guess what? We have a choice to be able to bless them. Yeah. How good... selfish of us just to think, oh yeah, just not for me to get by. I just talk, I think about me way too much. Yeah. And I really do believe that money is an amplifier. Mm -hmm. So if you are a good person, money is just going to help you do more good things. 100%. Like I, I think the more money I have, the more I can give to female-owned businesses, black owned businesses pick you know like to charities mm -hmm. to, I could set up my own charity mm -hmm. like I could give to family and friends that are struggling like and I don't mean that in a way of like oh come to me for money but I mean it in like a, a generosity yeah. a real financial value for me 100% mm -hmm. so if you're a good person and that can show up in so many different ways it's not just about giving but if you're a good person you're going to do more good with the more money that you have because 100%. not only are you going to have a peace of mind and not be stressing about your money and you're going to be able to go out into the world and be a good person mm. if you're a bad person or a person unfortunately more money will just, just make amplify you be a bit more. yeah so yeah it's just going to amplify it. and that's why money itself isn't bad it's just an illuminator of things mm -hmm. i agree i agree and i agree so much but unfortunately we are running out of time that thing is blinking i don't like when it blinks because that means that we don't have a lot of time <laughs> oh ross where yeah we only got like maybe like a minute left or something oh, like geez. that oh my yeah, god no, sorry like maybe two minutes left two minutes left we've been chatting but oh. we've been talking we've been talking for maybe like about an hour now well, I mean, we've been speaking for a lot longer than that outside of this. <laughs> oh, But gosh. then, yeah, for about an hour now. So we have to lock it off. We have to lock it off, unfortunately. Uh, we don't get to No more space. We don't get to finish what we're going to say. Okay, cool. Very quickly, right? Do a part two. We have to do a part two. Yes, if you, part two. if you don't want to see a part two, I don't even really care because we're going to do one anyway. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's more to be talked yeah, about, in it? But regardless, for whatever reason, just leave it in the comments below. Yeah. We're to see a part two. <laughs> there's, you, there's even a few things I want to talk, talk, to, uh, talk to you about, but we'll leave it there. But one thing I want to ask you, mm. obviously we'll talk about psychology of money and the emotional part of money. What would you say is the biggest tip for someone to renew their minds in the areas of how they, they attach, they're attached to money? Okay. I'm going to give two. Please. So one is about awareness. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have to become aware of what your money story and your money beliefs are. Mm. Because if you don't know, it's the same as talking about what we said about money and budgeting. Yeah. On an emotional level, if you don't know, if you are locking that away and you are avoiding it, and you're not going to be able to make any changes. Mm -hmm. So journaling, working with a coach, chatting to friends about it and really asking yourself, how do I feel about money? What has happened in the past has made me feel this way about mm. money and how would I like to feel about money and what do I then need to do to get there? So really just understanding those steps. Oh. And then two is about having a growth mindset. Mm. Believing that your brain can change. So even if you have always been bad with money, you've never been a spend a saver, you've always been a spender, you've always had issues, it does not have to be like that. Mm. Know that your brain can change. It takes work, mm. but what's the best work? It's pays, it has the best ROI. Damn. So that's what Damn. And for people who want to work with you, find you, Tell us more about that, please. So I have a website, which is www.mindmoneysoul.co.uk. Um, and then I'm on all the socials. So Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, um, just under Laura and more. Oh, and I have a podcast, which I already said. Come on. Money Soul. Amazing. Check it out, guys. Guys, there's so many more things we can say in this episode. <laughs> but we'll leave it here. We'll do a part two yes. with Laura and more. She's already agreed to it, right? Yes, right here. This is me. Right here. <laughs> right here, right now. We've agreed to it already. Yes, but indeed. guys... If you like this, go share with your friends. And before you even share with your friends, we have two events coming up. I don't know when this is coming up or coming out, but potentially it'll probably be before the second one. Yep. So the first one we have is a workshop, which is going to be on the 27th of May. Personal and branding. we also, personal branding workshop, come to that. Will you be coming? Matter of fact, you've got, you got a good personal brand already, but you might be able to share your value with some people. <laughs> mm. Oh. And then, yeah, yeah. Mm. And number two, PL turns two. PL turns two on the 29th of July. Am I right? Yes, sir. I'm correct. It's the 29th of July. PL turns two. Be there or be triangle because we're different, right? Wear your suits and your ties. Get everything ready. It's going to be a lovely night, man. We're going to get steady. People, 
I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you did because I loved it. Did you like it? I loved every second of it. Do you love it? Loved it. Amazing. That's <laughs> three loves. Squared. No, not even tri- that's 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 a that's cubed. That's yeah. love cubed. Maths. You spoke maths. Speak maths. You speak maths, right? <laughs> speak maths. Come on, that's a second language. <laughs> People, good night, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. But we're off. Let Big love, go. people. Purpose yeah. to the world. I'm back. Back.